Hey everyone, welcome back. I am uh, wrapping up in the shop here. I actually just cleaning up and I finished something up and I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention because um, I used to do it for a while and uh, well, you know what, let me, um, I'm going to pull you guys in, have a seat and we'll go over everything. Okay, so um, the reason why I want to do this video is um, I wanted to talk a little bit about belt loops. Uh, I used to make leather belt loops for my knives, uh, the bush knives and such, because you guys know how I feel about Kydexes being more utilitarian versus leather. Uh, but a lot of folks uh, didn't really like the idea of, of their knife sitting so high and so tight against their body. One was simply because they wanted to be able to access their knife when they were wearing a full length jacket or even a three quarter length jacket. They wanted a knife to hang down a little bit further. The other thing was too, and it's not a dig on anybody, is just we're all built differently. And sometimes having the, the knife on a Blatech tech lock so high and tight against your body, it's uncomfortable or you just can't wear it that way. Now, the Blatech tech lock has been a, a staple for knife makers. I, I couldn't even say for how long now, but it's because it's the most general purpose and uh, uh, most um, uniform type of way of mounting a knife. Now there are people and companies, I should say in particular, that use various types of nylon and they put it on the back of their kydex and they, and they attach it to their, you know, to their belt. And then there's folks that will use a hybrid of kydex and leather, meaning the kydex sheath, the body is kydex, and then they'll actually go ahead and use a thinner leather material and put that against it. So you have kydex, kydex, and then leather. And then that leather comes up and creates a belt loop too, and it's stitched or riveted or something. And sometimes those can get pretty heavy. But what I did a while back is I started doing my Kydex sheaths, but when I lined up my holes, I would line up the holes to accept either a Blade Tech Tech Lock, or I would make a, a Kydex adapter, or a, yeah, basically a Kydex adapter. I would take Kydex, I would heat it, I would mold it, and then I would attach it to the back of the sheath and then I would make a leather belt loop that went up. And that leather belt loop could be made at various lengths uh, to accommodate for when people carry. 95, 98% of the time I make a leather belt loop that doesn't go any higher than the top of the handle of a knife when it's sheathed. And the reason I wanted to do a video on this is because I've actually been making a couple of them for folks. And recently I'd made a, a, a knife, I got a knife here for Tristan and with Forbidden Off-Road. And uh, um, he bought a knife from me a while back and he had, I had the tech lock on that sheath and he took it, he wore it for a while. And then we got back together on this one trip we did with Lolo Overland. And he was asking me about that because, you know, he's a big guy. He's kind of, he's a stocky, he's a, he's a stocky fella. He's a lot more robust than I am. I'm a, you know, long and kind of slender and he's a little bit shorter and stockier. No offense, buddy. You know, I love you, man. I love you. But uh, he just wasn't finding it comfortable. And I was like, I can completely understand. I went in my backpack and I pulled out a knife that I had with a Kydex sheath and a leather belt loop. I said, what about this? He goes, that was pretty cool. So he wore it while we were at camp together, walking around and everything. He just fell in love with it. He says, I love the way that feels. So I took his Coyote Works knife and uh, I made him a belt loop. And this is what I'm talking about, is I take this Kydex and I mold it to the back and then I use uh, washers and, and, and head posts and screws and I mount it on there. But I also make the leather belt loop. I'll cut it to the diam the width that it needs to be and then usually the length of what the customer likes. And then I'll dye it, I'll stamp it. Sometimes I tool them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just do a little line. Sometimes I just leave them plain. It's pretty much what most people have asked about. Most of the time it's either plain or just a little line that goes around it and that's about it. But I wanted to bring it to your attention because it's an option that I've never really offered on the website. Um, it wasn't very popular a few years ago, but in the last maybe year, year and a half, it has become a little bit more of a requirement or a request. Guys are asking about that, and a lot of folks are just going to leather sheets, which I'm fine with. I think uh, when it comes to a dangling type knife or the, the, uh, um, the nostalgia and the warmth and the charisma of a leather knife, leather sheath with a handmade knife, it really, it, they really go good together. But I thought I would share with you just some pictures and what I'm talking about uh, about these because I've gone ahead and I've updated my website 
to include both buying a Blade Tech Lock if you might want one for another knife or if you maybe lost yours or broke yours or something, you can go on the website and buy just a Tech Lock from me as well as uh, opting to not have a Tech Lock but instead having a leather uh, belt loop, a leather drop down loop. Uh, right now I have tooled and not tooled and I have three colors, black, tan and brown. Uh, like a light brown, dark brown, and that's pretty mu uh, much about it. Maybe somewhere down the line, I'll try to get uh, pre-dyed leathers that are more consistent, and I can offer somebody three or four different colors. But honestly, dark brown, light brown, and black, I haven't made any other any other colors. Um, I have done some fancy tooling on a couple, and I don't get really elaborate because then it it, it does get it takes more time to tool a piece of leather. But um, I'll tool it, and then every once in a while, if it's a light tan or a medium brown kind of leather, I'll use some antique uh, uh, dyeing on there, and I'll rub it in there, and it'll actually get into the grains of the tooling, and that really gives it some nice character, like I did for the Axe Family knife. Uh, but I figured I'd share it with you all, because there might be people out there that own the, a Coyote Works knife, and maybe you're just not liking the idea of the knife with the tech lock. So I wanted to put this out there. Now, with that being said, if you do have one of my knives now and you want to upgrade uh, and you want a leather drop like that, you're gonna have to send me your knife back. So they will cost a little bit more money because you're gonna have to ship it to me. I'm gonna have to ship it back to you. Uh, but we can communicate via email about that and I can let you know. Um, but if you are looking to buy a knife and you might want that option, you can hit me up. You just go to the website itself and you'll see leather belt loops. Just click that, it'll add it to your shopping cart and then I'll know to make one for you. And again, it's gonna have the options of the three colors and if you want tooling or not. And I threw some pictures on that as well so you guys can get a general idea of what I'm talking about as, as well as here on the video. But I thought I'd share that information with you before I shipped off Tristan's knife and um, shared it with everybody. So I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for all the support. Thank you all you coyotes and everybody else that's been coming on board. Um, a, lot, a lot of folks actually have been looking at the other knives and buying them and uh, uh, Montanas and Rogues, for instance, that's really nice. I do appreciate that. So, uh, but everybody else, thank you very much for everything. And uh, we'll just catch you in the next video. You have a good one. Remember, keep me from that bottom of the YouTube bucket, would you? Bye.